Yep. But a cup, baby, just to let me down. In this box, we have the brand new RockShox Pike Ultimates for 2022-2023. It's probably the first time I've been a bit excited by a fork release because there's quite a lot of new technology in here all at the same time, which is quite unusual. We're dead excited to show you today. So quick unboxing. Let's give it up. <laughs> now, the important thing with this is this little icon here. Yep, these are buttercups. Now we're gonna take these apart and show you exactly what a buttercup is down there at the bottom of the fork. The other exciting news is Charger 3 damper. Now, what I really like about this is that they've actually split out the high speed and the low speed compression. They're now on two independent circuits, so there's no crosstalk. If you adjust one, it doesn't influence the other. They're two independent things and they've upgraded the Debonair air spring as well. Well, <clears throat> they look very pretty, but I don't know about you, but I'm more interested about what's inside these. Here we go. These are the buttercups. So these little buttercups are giving about four millimeters worth of damping right at the very start of the stroke. Now this is actually uh, an elastomer inside this little thing. And what that's doing is taking out all those initial vibrations that come through your hands onto your handlebars, which can be quite fatiguing as you try to grip against something that's vibrating. Now, this four millimeters, they say, is enough to reduce that by about 20%. So for those of you doing longer rides on your bike and definitely over that sort of terrain where you're not always taking big hits, but just repeated, this should be the answer to that tired hands, reduced grip strength, um, and definitely a performance upgrade. And I guess in that, that's where that little buttercup should be doing its thing, yeah. really. Yes. Um, I, 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 I didn't I have to say I didn't notice no. it, but I think it's one of those things where, because we didn't notice it, it's probably doing its job. So I've just tried to remove these two components, but they're screwed on really tight, and I don't want to risk damaging them because there's no spare parts available right now, so they can just stay there. But inside there, there's an elastomer, and if I wobble this now, you can see how that is independent from this main shaft here. So you get that four millimeters of suspension, that chatter resistance. It's actually quite soft to get those first few millimeters. I can really see how that's gonna help. Okay, here is our damper cartridge. First thing you'll notice is that rubber bladder that is normally here has been replaced. This is now a solid aluminum piece. And if I can just see through that hole there, you can just see the, the spring sort of the uh, high spread compression damping circuit because it's now actually a coil spring in there controlling an IFP. And then the main column of oil is here controlling the main circuitry. And of course, at the bottom there, that little buttercup, again, just providing those initial first four millimeters of damping. Right, let's take a closer look at this damper unit. So first of all, this rebound adjuster looks like it's really well machined, much higher quality, decent size Allen key, and of course, a metal metering rod. This is a little buttercup design. And of course, if you're gonna upgrade these, you need to upgrade both the damper and the air spring. You can't just upgrade one or the other. Now, coming up this, you can see a much more durable design on this damper. And of course, no bladder, just using that coil sprung design. And that's gonna give us independent control. So this is your high speed adjustment. And your low speed adjustment just there as well. So I actually quite like these. They've got two big dials on there that I think you'll be able to reach down and adjust while you have your gloves on. So over on the air side, again, those buttercups and then this is all inside the forks. This gap here is your negative air, which will move up. There is, there is that little bump stop there. So this is part of the, the negative air chamber, which I say they've greatly improved for that nice smooth plush feeling off the initial impact. 
And of course, there's that quad seal and obviously everything above this will be a big part of the positive chamber. There's the top cap, no change there. It doesn't come with any um, volume spaces as standard. A, a, quite a difference in the first 20, 30 mil of travel. It seems way more rigid than so stiffer. So as you're going over something, you just got that bit of confidence that it's not going to die. Yeah. And then as you go through the rest of the travel, it feels like it's predictable. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely saw that. You see on that slow motion actually that it actually goes through its travel quite. Yeah, quite it's not just, you don't get like a sudden stop. Like you don't feel the, because usually you get like the curve of the compression. It gets mm. harder as you go through, but that feels quite hard. I that. think that's probably down to the fact there's lower pressure in there than before. Yeah. So you don't get that really big ramp up of spring rates no. where it goes through the first bit quite easy and then you have to add volume yeah, spaces see, to do with it. Yeah, so that's, that's that, I don't like. That's so that spring no, really helping. Right, let's get these back together again. I don't want to go too deep into the damper cartridge. One, I don't think there's anything to learn that we won't see from the schematics that I'll put up later on, but also um, RockShox haven't actually taken delivery of the oil yet. So if I take this out, I have, don't have the oil that I can replace it with yet on its way. As I put the lowers on, one thing worth noting, they've actually changed the bushings in here. It's a much thicker bushing and SRAM are saying, or RockShox are saying, that you can't replace them anymore. They're, they're well and truly in there. And even with the right tools, you can't replace them and they won't offer them as a service part either. Now, the upside is that they say that it should be last year an awful lot longer. The downside is that if those bushings do start to wear out and you get that little bit of play, you need to replace the entire lower leg casting. To be honest, replacing the bushings isn't something we tend to do on most modern forks. It was definitely a problem about a decade ago Nowadays, it's quite rare that we do it, and if it is because it's, the service main intervals haven't been maintained at all, not even the 50 hours might have lapsed a bit, but when we've had to do it, those forks are in a real state, and, and the labour cost in repairing the lower legs is almost the same as just replacing the lower legs. So I don't see the fact that the bushings aren't replaceable as a major deal breaker. Here we go, 50 PSI. I have to say, I am liking the new top cap. I, I could actually imagine getting a grip of that with cold gloved hands and having some sort of attempt at undoing it and getting some air in there mid-ride. So if you're interested in the box we get two volume spaces, staff angled nut, stickers, little spaces that go at the bottom of the fork which will make it a whole lot easier to get your front wheel in and out. Rebound knob with a jackalope and our tortoise this new design change here and actually is really nice to see no paint over spray on these as well these are nice and clean faced brake mounts of course reduced psi and we have our little pressure pressure relief these are actually an upgrade that you can get on the lower models on the pike select but on the ultimates they come fitted here is our our mod guard three good sturdy bolts hold those on the new debonair and you will notice there's no more markings on the stanchion as well so you don't get that i I'd always thought it looked look messy as opposed to being useful and of course up here on the top we have our charger 3 damper with independent high and low speed compression dials really impressed with what's inside them now let's get them on a bike and get them outside It was way too windy and wet to uh, ride outside. <laughs> so we thought we'd just come back into the workshop and try and give you guys our opinion on our first ride with them. It's obviously just one ride in one set of conditions. I rode it uphill, felt fantastic. Jake done most of the downhill filming as you saw in the video. You got big hits. The first bit in the video was that like big hit. How did yeah. they on off the um you know, when you're really slab. like that massive hit. Well, I mean you can see here like how much we bottomed it out yeah. <laughs> straight away. Utilised all <laughs> all travel. Yes. <laughs> 
what we'd hoped for is that I felt supportive the whole way through, that it yeah. felt predictable. So, yeah, so I don't know. Um, I usually notice on forks, like the first the thing I really don't like about forks, like my forks, I run rock hard because um, I hate the diviness of the first amounts of travel yeah. in, a, in, a, in a standard fork, but these actually feel a, a, quite a difference in the first 20, 30 mil of travel. It's, seems way more rigid than so stiffer so as you're coming over something you just got that bit of confidence that it's not going to dive yeah and as you go through the rest of the travel it feels like it's predictable yeah yeah i definitely saw that you see on that slow motion actually that it actually goes through its travel quite yeah quite it's not just you don't get like a sudden stop like you don't feel the because usually you get like the curve of the compression it gets mm. harder as you go through but that feels quite hard i that. think that's probably down to the fact there's lower pressure in there than before yeah so you don't get that really big ramp up of spring legs no. where it goes through the first bit quite easy and then you have to add volume yeah, spaces that's, to do with it yeah, so that's that, that i don't like that's so that spring really helping good, you know. so it's probably predictable the whole way through and then that big slow impact as you did that big drop off into yeah. the track and that was quite a slow speed just gradually loading yeah, the yeah. fork how did that feel because you look pretty I mean, in control yeah. there that kind of, I mean, that utilised all travel straight away. As soon as, as soon as I rolled off there and hit the floor, it used all the travel, but it took, I mean, that's a pretty heavy impact to take. And I mean, I didn't feel a big impact through my, through my arms or anything. Okay. So I'd say we dealt with, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's about two and a half foot, so it's, it's quite a significant drop to just your front wheel. Yeah, absolutely. So you didn't feel that coming through. So you felt no. like you were in control as you landed. Yeah. And then down that, 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 uh, that fast bit of track where it had been churned up by the big machinery which is really unfortunate but it gave us all those really really small boulders yeah. at a speed which is pretty fast and the forks taking these repeated hits and like you are in this sort of position so that's normally when a fork's in danger of like packing down and becoming yeah you get like them, but when you get stuck halfway through your travel yeah i mean no but it's it um, it kind of it stops that happening because it eliminates the first 20 mil always not being there like it always pulls back to full length as soon yeah. as you let off it's not it's not like there's that little bit of slack that they used to have. I run mine way over what pressure I should because, like, for my weight, because yeah. I just don't like a soft fork because they never seem to come back, but they did. So yeah, you're right, and I wonder if that's going to help people run less travel because um, normally you'd set your sag, but then the first 10 mil would almost be pointless because it yeah, disappeared yeah, through the travel so why quickly. That's why that really annoys me about. That. And um, and actually with these, it does actually feel like you're getting the full 130 millimeter of the travel from these. It doesn't feel like you just instantly lose some the yeah. second, you, second you load it. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what the bigger forks like. Mm. To, to know how that... Yeah, the lyrics, of course, coming soon. <laughs> we, yeah. we weren't going to talk about it, but the um, of course, these go from uh, 120 up to the 140 millimetres. Yeah. And then the lyrics sort of take over from there, so there's a crossover where you get a nice lightweight pike at 140 mil, or you go for the stiffer but heavier, heavier lyric. Um, I think that'd be a really tough argument to have in your own mind when you're building a bike, actually. Yeah. Because I think these are probably going to be stiff and supportive enough. Yeah. I think a lot of people just like a bigger number, don't they? <laughs> That's usually yeah. what people go on. Yeah, absolutely. So, Of course, these aren't massively grippy tyres. These are the Pirelli Scorpion mid so 2.4s, I think, aren't they? So yeah. trail type 4, but these weren't wanting for any, any extra stiffness at all in that, in that grip, I didn't think. Loving the mudguard, by the way. It's, it's so really nice. Not it's, it's way better. I hate mudguards that come out the front as well. So it's nice that they just bolt on the back. Yeah, all the ones that just zip tied on, it just looks like yeah. an afterthought. Actually, looks like it's a part of the fork, yeah, which I just lovely. think, yeah, yeah, superb. So yeah, big thumbs up from me. I think uh, massive Great. improvement. Yeah, it's. Uh, I have to say, I'm quite looking forward to seeing what the new SIDs come out like. I think SIDs with a set of buttercups. <laughs> Rocking out. No, I meant what are you doing 